Good morning. It's Monday, August 7th, 2023. My name is Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Access Point, and our scripture is Psalm, chapter 17. I am praying to you because I know you will answer, O God. Bend down and listen as I pray. Show me your unfailing love in wonderful ways. By your mighty power, you rescue those who seek refuge from their enemies. Prayer is something like a house with only one access point, the door that admits a person into the presence of God. In these two verses, there are four bidding cuts, like the ridges of a key that align with a lock's notches to open the door. King David's prayer is a model no believer ought to forget. Without these cuts, no prayer will align with God's requirements. The access point will remain closed. Bit cut number one, I know you will answer. Faith is trusting that God does hear and answer. Apostle James understood this, James chapter 1, verse 6, But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that's blown and tossed by the wind. Faith is not arrogance or knowing the magic combinations of words. Your own words are always better, right from the heart and soul. Bit cut number two, bend down, O Lord. Asking God to bend down to hear you is an acknowledgement of your position relative to God's. He is the enthroned one. Isaiah gives us the picture in Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. High and lifted up is where God resides. Our prayer access point won't open if we approach God as equal on our level. All facts are to the contrary. God is eternal, creator of the universe, all-powerful and holy. We are below that, way below that. Bit cut number three, unfailing love. The Hebrew word for God's unfailing love is chesed. In other parts of scripture, the word is translated as loving kindness or mercy. The primary thought is of God's covenant love, the love he showed to Abraham in blessing him for his obedience. This is the quote-unquote unfailing love of which David writes, the response of God to anyone who withholds nothing from God. Apostle James explains in chapter 2, Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. And then bit cut number four, surrender to the rescue. King David recognizes it is God's mighty power that rescues those who acknowledge God's sovereignty in this universe. This is a matter of trusting God no matter what the circumstances seem to dictate. It's placing faith in Him alone rather than any other source of supposed strength you may have considered or leaned upon in the past. God gave Solomon this thought to pass on to us about surrendering to God's rescuing blessings. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. For you today. God's covenant love was best expressed in Jesus Christ. Jesus told his disciples there wasn't anything he would withhold from them if they asked in his name. That's the access point. Not a magic formula, simply a fact. To ask in his name is to have all the bidding cuts in place. Faith that he'll answer, faith in his strength, faith in his mercy, and surrendering all to his will. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.